governors under the People's Democratic Party arrive in the Oyo State Governor's Lodge for the first meeting of the forum for the year. The meeting is holding behind closed doors to discuss the current economic challenges and security situation in the country, as well as developments within the party. After several hours of the meeting, the governors assert their position on the state of the economy and security. We have a partner even as opposition to make sure that we don't bring any distraction. But certainly the monetary policies and the economic policies rest here. And we can see that we know the majority of Nigerians live in the states. And so we are doing so much across party lines on a bipartisan basis within the Nigerian government forum, within the National Economic Council, to make sure that we cushion the effect of this, uh, some of these policies that have far-reaching consequences on our people. We reiterate our call with the state police, with appropriate safeguards to avoid any abuse or overreach by any chair of government. The governors also discussed developments within the party. Father, the forum passed a vote of confidence in the Iliad and our own led National Working Committee and WC of the party and urge it to put in motion the necessary machinery for convening meetings of the appropriate organs of the party from caucus to the National Executive Committee NEC as soon as possible. We are 100% behind the door and you can see there is no ramp up, there is no division and we are very much behind the National Working Committee and the state chapter of the party and indeed the government to make sure that we go together in unison, in unity, to produce a success for our most respected, the eldest governor in the governor's world. The governor's pledged to work together to build a strong opposition, while pledging to take the necessary steps to address the impact of the high cost of living in the country. So that meeting happened, and right after, next day, we had uh, the Senate meeting with the service chiefs. And that meeting ended just after 9 p.m. yesterday. The president of the Senate came out uh, well, and said some resolutions were made. There should be more synergy amongst uh, the security agencies. In fact, the security agencies were commended for arresting, what, 90 percent of those perpetrating the heinous crimes. A lot more issues were raised to talk about uh, unifying all of those databases, and the Minister of Interior was also there, uh, was given that charge as well as other things. By the way, the Minister of Information has since responded uh, to the governors, the PDP governors, uh, about the situation in Nigeria, saying that well, we're not close to Venezuela. Yes, we have challenges, but we're not close to Venezuela, as was said in that one. But let's uh, talk about uh, these updates and perhaps a way to find a meeting point so we can resolve all of the security challenges which we have on our hands. And we're joined on the program this morning by Mr. Oyekachi Adekoya, security consultant, joins us live from our Abuja studio. Mr. Oyekachi Adekoya, thank you for joining us on the morning brief. Thank you for having me, and good morning to the viewers. Good morning. Uh, well, you're in the nation's capital. That's where that meeting happened yesterday between the service chiefs, uh, members of cabinet, and the Senate. The president of Senate came out uh, to speak about that. I, I imagine you caught some of the things that were said, uh, but the Senate president commending the security agencies for you know, making arrests 90%, uh, he said that was a figure given to him. But yesterday we've seen incidents in Zamfer, for example, policemen killed, uh, even residents as well killed, scores uh, kidnapped. So people are trying to balance that. Arrests have been made, 90%, that's a lot. But we're still seeing these uh, insecurities in this sort of large scale. So what may we be missing? And this is for the millionth time we're probably asking that question, Mr. Dekoya. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, I wouldn't go into any arguments with the Senate on the numbers presented to them by the security agencies. Uh, but what we can just look at for a fact is that um, year to date, there has been over there about 722 persons kidnapped in Nigeria. Um, that's just year to date. 
the statistics would suggest that there's been a sustained uptick. Now, I understand the need for politicians to um, give some sense of um, calm to the people, um, but it's not a fault of any administration because if you look at insecurity in Nigeria, in the Sahel, across Africa, um, since 1999, as a matter of fact, uh, between the period of 2000 and 2003, um, Africa recorded less than 100 cases of um, terrorism. Uh, but since the start of a number of um, anti-terrorism activity, I think the number has grown um, to over 23,000 there about just last year. So there are a number of factors that are external. There are a number of factors that are also entrenched, um, that are also systemic. Coming down to the problem, uh, and to answer your question, what we are seeing, um, we're suffering from a misappropriation of force, a misappropriation of resources. Um, also, we are suffering from wrong diagnosis of the problem, really. Um, the, the problem is not with the service chiefs, to be fair to them. That's why when you see they change successive service chiefs, the problem remains. The problem, I dare say, is with the National Assembly and the state houses of assembly to find the will to solve the problem head on. Um, I heard the PDP governor's um, uh, call for state police. It's not anything new. Um, in, in 2022, the northern governors, northern governors and northern political elites um, supported and came to see the support state police. I think in you know, a meeting also attended by the Sultan of Sokoto. Um, sometime in 2018, all the governors in Nigeria, I think there are about 30 governors or so, um, led by then Governor Yari, they also came out to claim that um, it's time for state police. So um, I think we are consensus, building consensus generally now on the way forward because really, those service chiefs cannot do beyond the remit of um, what the law allows them to do and the resources they have and the scope of work given to them. Um, calling in the service chiefs for 24 hours um, is not the way to resolve the issue. Uh, what we should see is a meeting with the leadership of the House of Assembly, the state governors and the president CEC, of course with the Minister of Interior and then the Minister of Police Affairs, you know, and then find and fashion a way forward that takes policing initiative back to the communities, back to the sub-national level, because yours truly, the president has no business, really, uh, with internal security. He should be bothered more with the territorial integrity of the country and, you know, pursuing our national interests and securing those interests using the tools already given to him, which would be the military, of course, international diplomacy, um, the NIA and other, you know, federal looking um, uh, agencies. So I think that's the way to go, really. Um, this whole every day called the service chief in, that's, that's all cosmetic, if you ask me. So, Mr. Adikoya, you have said something significant that the challenge really is not about the service chiefs and each time they're changed, we're back here having the same conversation about the same challenges. So, um, the Senate met with the service chiefs and all other security leaders of security agencies for 10 hours. I imagine that um, strategy would have been discussed um, the needs of the security agencies may have been discussed. Are you optimistic that now that there is a consensus building towards um, the need for state policing, that honest conversations about the real issues will lead us somewhere soon, very shortly? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, with profound respect to um, uh, senior colleagues and colleagues in the military um, sector, uh, before now, when you talk about security, you want to call a major general or a retired military officer. With profound respect, the public order, public safety is not their forte. Nigeria is trying to build a $1 trillion economy. We are not trying to build $1 trillion military barracks. You know, um, that's not what we really need. We need a society that is safe and secure for investment to thrive and for economic development to go forward. 
So we need to look again at the 2019 National Security Strategy document and improve on it. Um, we said as a country we would now begin to focus more on human security. You cannot do human security without economic prosperity or some form of economic reforms and heading in the right direction. You cannot do economic security when the people cannot um, find means to achieve um, their own aspiration in a, in a safe and secure environment. So even our national security posture is threatened by the macroeconomic challenges we are having and the fact that strategy is almost all over the place because most times we seem to be very reactive. Now, importantly, um, we are achieving consensus because the, the old school of thought that, that presupposed that force must always be controlled and retained from Abuja have seen themselves that um, that's not sustainable. Like you said in your opening report, um, even the military is not safe. The military is not safe because they are in the community. They have to transport from point A to point B. They are also being kidnapped. The barracks themselves are within the community. So if you have a community uh, that is not properly policed, you may have uh, 50 caliber machine guns all around your barracks. You still uh, have to go through the communities to that secure spot. So uh, the, the insecurity has come on to, to, to roost as it were. Yeah, Mr. Adokoya, just, just as we begin to uh, wrap up, uh, I think the issue of state policing for some people should not be an isolated conversation. Maybe to broaden the conversation. And I'm asking because you see this government taking it, elevating that conversation to the issue of restructuring because sometimes insecurity is just an effect. We need to look at cause and controls across board and resources and all of that also play a role when we look at the history. So uh, do you expect this government to be brave enough to do the hard job of ensuring that it looks at the entire issue of restructuring which state policing comes under? Spot on, spot on. I would be surprised if this government that campaign on restructuring does not restructure. Uh, it's a campaign promise that the APC made. Um, if you look at where the president is coming from, from Lagos State, for example, they had been at the forefront of campaigning for state police. Um, Lagos was among the first state to set out that infrastructure with his Lagos State Security uh, Neighborhood Watch. Um, that's been there. Um, that's what the president is known for, the clamor for true federalism. Uh, and now he has the opportunity in history um, to set this country aright, in the right direction. And so, you see, the, the, the National Assembly meeting with the service chiefs, the service chiefs are an appointee of the president. You know, short of calling the president to the National Assembly, which with profound respect, I think that they should be doing, to have a um, conversation, a more serious conversation, because you have the conversation with the service chiefs who answer to somebody. Uh, what are they supposed to do? The ultimate power lies within the uh, office of the president. So, again, what the president, I expect, should be doing um, sincerely um, is to call the governors and the leadership of the National Assembly, perhaps also with the leadership of the State House of Assembly, into a security conference. They have a two day, three day workshop and hash out the fine lines of how to go forward with the initiative of state policing. One of the big concerns that they will have would be with weapons classification. And that's too easy to do. You know, rather than have weapons um, proliferation across the country, you can class the weapons for state police and limit it to service pistols, for example. They may require some tactical squads and team, limit the number, resource them with that number, control the number. If you look at the Mopo squadron we have across the country, there are about 79 squadron of them, stationed across the country at strategical points. Those points, those forces are there on a call-out basis to serve as quick reaction teams, either for riots or any um, actions that are snowballing out. So, call back federal deployments, specialize, then have crack specialized team deployed in those formations across the country as you would. Let the state police be at the front line, be the first point of contact to act as a force multiplier to the federal police, to the National Guard, in this case, uh, civil defense, and then to the military. 
But what we find in the country is right. that an incident occurs, we put the resource we should put last first. We throw in the military first. And what simply happens is that the, ministry, the military goes in on a search and destroy mission, level the police, cannot embed with the civilian populace, um, they leave sometimes with more trouble, with more sentiments of, oh, they are for us, they are against us. Uh, that's why you can see the Nigerian military come out to say, support us as you support the Nigerian uh, support. Agency. The problem is not with the military. Right. It's that we are setting up the current systems and the current service chiefs to fail. What we need, as you have said, is a true rework of this federalism that we preach. And security is expensive. I understand from the perspective of the government, well, the state governors at the sub-national sub level. Mr. You cannot do security without funding. Yeah. The governors are already doing the funding. But let's make the argument to say that uh, we free-floated our currency. Uh, the dollar to Naira is now 1,000-something. I don't know what it is today. It changes about every day. Right. But whatever it is, well, Mr. there's Nicola. more money at FAC to be shared. So we can, at this point, begin to fund state policing. The critical issue of funding is out of the way. Uh, and yes, we must restructure to go forward, yeah. Very interesting point you made, and uh, I hope it's not preaching to the choir, because as you said, this government uh, came on with the promise of restructuring. But guess what, the previous government came on with the promise of restructuring as well, but it never happened. We saw what happened with the constitution amendment process was thrown out. So we'd like to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Oyeka Chedekoya. Quite important points you have made, and it's important to keep making these points. So we'll hold uh, government to account. Thank you so much for your time. I will have said happy Valentine's, but I'm not sure if security people <laughs> Uh, <laughs> indulge in such, uh, you know, <laughs> such things. But <laughs> you, 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 you will be surprised. But happy, happy Valentine's to you too. Thank you so much for your time, Sir Nicoya. Well, we'll take a moment now on the show, and when we return, we'll get into our Valentine's Day special. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. Absolutely. Now we've dealt with some of those hard issues. Let's do some relaxing. Let's laugh. Do some music. It's all the morning brief. Stay with us.